guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming, something now it's one of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus Lakes Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm change, you were up, and let's go. What do you mean, waiting? Lake prefers they, them. Yeah, they do, yeah. Okay. Well, after a point, it almost seemed like they were trying to tell me without telling me. They'd ask me if their outfit looked androgynous, for example, or act all giddy after getting she heard by strangers. Oh, and there are all those non-binary Keeps and Kobolds characters they've played. Classic egg behavior. Keeps and Kobolds? Egg behavior? This is going over my head. Uh, okay. Well observed, I guess. Plain to see from my perspective. I can't tell whether Jorgen is exceptionally perceptive or I'm just the opposite. Or maybe there's something I'm not getting. They did tell me about their split with Torolf, though. I got a whole wall of text before the film screening. Things have been rather silent since then. Jorgen tips his head tips his head toward the spot where Rune was sitting. The deer's empty mug is still on the table. I imagine he was why. Among other things, yeah. Can I ask why you're telling me all this? Hmm? I'm sure you can see Lake's a sensitive soul. Sounds about right. You should know that that sensitive soul has got rather invested in you, so to speak. I imagine you feel similarly, given all the time you spend staring longingly at each other. Huh? Really? Yes, it's comically obvious. Wow, that's mortifying. Here I thought we were being super subtle about it. Look, this is your business, not mine, so on principle I can't expect you to listen to me. I strongly encourage you, however, to be sure you know what you want. Lake is sort of like family to me, and though I can't claim to know what's best for them, I know they deserve better than having their heart broken. I won't see it happen again. Take good care of them. And do it for my sake, too. I like you, Carvin. You seem alright. Don't make me listen to them vent about you. I... I don't want to hurt them. Hmm. Okay. Good. Ugh. I mean, I'm not in charge of you. Do what you... Do what you will. Just wanted to make my stance known. Thanks. It's a lot to think about. I'm sure. Take your time. You may need it. Through the bathroom door and the white noise of the shower running, I hear Lake singing something. That's cute. Oh. I should probably head back and shower in my room. Sounds about right. Shall I tell them you'll text them? You'll text them when you want them over? Yeah, thanks. I guess I'll see you tomorrow morning. See you then. Good night, Carvin. Good night. I step out of the room, closing the door behind me. Even through the wall, the sound of rushing water just barely escapes. I hope Blake doesn't finish showering too soon. I don't want to keep them waiting. The thick carpet beneath me muffles my paw on the brief walk back to my room, recalling my run-in with Lake just after we got here, and their overflowing enthusiasm for our surroundings. I take everything in for a moment, the way the warm light catches on the edges of the shiny doorknobs and picture frames, the way the wooden walls creak and groan when you listen to them, as if asking to be left alone. It's the same building, yet it all feels different somehow. I'm reminded of the day my parents gave me my first camera. Through a new lens, every detail seemed to suffuse with beauty and meaning. Even the tiniest flitter of light on something you'd never take a, take a second glance at. But I also remember looking through the photos with at first fascination, which gave way to indifference, and then in time, disappointment. Fascination, indifference, disappointment. The part of the semester passed in dull images and empty frames. With Lake in the picture, things have changed. But long before I get here, that haze still lingered around me. I had no interest in my surroundings and no desire to let Lake in. But here, something clicked. And it's only grown since then until this moment, where I stand in the middle of my room feeling like an actor centered in a hot spotlight, seeing each and every action or object as if it's imbued with dramatic consequence. The twist is that every intrusive thought, every worry, doubt, or rumination carries too much meaning to be dismissed. Now they circle around Jorgen's words. Take good care of them. Be sure you know what you want. I don't want to hurt them. I'm breathing heavily. My chest hurts and my muzzle is dry. As I retreat to the warmth of the shower, a cascade of questions roars in my head. Do I know what I want? How do I know what I want if I don't know where this is going? What if the story ends here? Do I try and make it work? What if I fail? What if Lake and I return to strangers? Can this last? I'm scared. I know. I'm scared too. Where's this going? I, I don't know. Does it matter? Shouldn't it? Do you always know what's going to happen when you do something? Fine. Why are you scared then? 
What? I can't be? I'm just trying to get over it. You say that I'm you say that like I'm not trying. You're not. You're giving up before it's even started. I'm trying to be realistic. No, you're trying not to get hurt. Have you been hurt before? I have, more than once. Why? I don't know. You don't always know what went wrong. How did you get over it? I don't think I have. What's stopping you? The pain doesn't go away if you try not to think about it. It doesn't work that way. And being with someone else won't get rid of it either. Why put yourself through that then? You can ask that your whole life and never find a good answer. At least not in words. What do you mean? It's just a feeling. I can't describe it to you. Can you try? When I get cl when I get close to someone, I look out ahead of me and see all the ways I can ruin everything. Every tragic possibility unfolds before my eyes, and each one ends with me alone. I can't turn that off. I can try and shut it out or lock it away, but it's always there, gnawing at me. But it never matters. Being with them feels too right for me to let them go. When something feels right, you can't tell yourself otherwise. You can only choose to keep going or leave it behind. And you always choose to keep going. Every time. Even though... Even though I might get hurt. Yes. I don't want to regret what could have been. Will I regret this? Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. That's not for me to say. Of course it isn't. How are you feeling now? Like shit? Me too. What are you gonna do now? I don't know. A knock at the door. Hey! Hey! I show Lake in, shutting the door behind them. They leave their toes they leave their shoes by the door before dropping a drawstring bag onto the nearest chair. Uh what's in that? Just some things I might need. They wink. Ha! Sure, cool. Any ideas on what to do tomorrow? Blake hops onto the bed next to me, close enough that her shoulders touch. Hmm, we get into the restaurant. Maybe a museum. Oh, Miko told me there's an aquarium. We could go there. Maybe. I also heard there's some kind of classical muse music performance going on. It'd be nice if they were playing some some Siberius. Siberius? Siberius? Uh, the great Finnish composer, the greatest Finnish composer in history, known for seven symphonies in the Heron of Tanula? Oh, okay, I didn't take you for a classical listener. I used to play cello back in secondary school. There's a solo work of his that I liked a lot. I wish I still had a cello. It was so nice. Do they have instrument rentals somewhere on campus? Huh, I never checked, but I'll have to now. Maybe I'll play for you sometime. All I want is to indulge, to dive headfirst into that fantasy. I'd love that, I really would, but I can't think about it now. Something wrong? No, why? You've just been a little quiet. All I can do is stare at my paws. Is there something on your mind? You can talk to me, I'm listening. I take a deep breath. I'm scared. How come? Have I been too much? No, no, not at all. Well, I'm glad to hear that, but what's scaring you then? I... I think back to the sauna earlier, where I sat across from Miko. Miko, the wolf I loved, the wolf I left behind. We were right in front of each other, but worlds apart. Never again. I don't want to hurt you. What? Why do you think you're going to hurt me? I don't know. You just kept bringing up how you've been hurt and all the way things have gone wrong before. I don't want to do that to you. You deserve better. Carvin, what are you talking about? Where did this come from? I just... I don't want you to regret falling for me. I hurt the only person I ever loved. I can't do that again. Are you... Do you want me to leave? No, it's... Like I said, I don't want you to regret. That's not up to you. You don't have to... You don't have any say in how I feel. And now Lake sounds hurt and confused. Ironic. We talked about spending the night together. I come here and now you blindside me with this. I just hope we can have something like last night again. Maybe a little more. I don't know. You keep saying you don't want to hurt me like it's the reason to say no. But I don't know what, you, I don't know what you're saying no to. Did I... What do you think I'm asking of you? Um, I thought you wanted... You don't have to guess what I want. I'm right here. Look, Carvin, I like you. I like you a lot, but I can't rush into things anymore. I can't afford to think about where this this thing we have is going. There's no point. Everything in the, everything I want is in the present. I want to spend time here with you. I want to explore the town together. I want to watch, take, watch you take pictures and see you smile at the world around you. I want to fall asleep in your arms. Ugh. 
We only have so much time here. The more of it you spend worrying about the future, the less you have to enjoy the present. Sometimes the future is frightening, yeah. Other times it's so exciting, you forget it isn't real. You start planning for things you haven't seen, that haven't happened yet. Instead of learning the things you don't know, you start filling in the gaps with your own imagination. It sounds familiar. Yeah. I told you earlier, I'm scared out of my mind. We don't even know each other that well. I think we've spent more time here, more time together here than we have in the past month. I don't want to make the same mistakes this time, but I trust myself. I trust you. We have two days left here, Carvin. I don't want to spend them worrying about labels or planning what we're going to do when we get back. I'm going to do what feels right while I'm here with you. That's all I want. So tell me, what do you want? Because I can't keep guessing anymore. I want you. I can feel it calling in the air tonight. <laughs> no. It's stupid. Hmm. I want you, baby. I just want you. Huh? Fuck. Shit. Here goes. I cupped their cheek with my, my, my paw. C can I? And like pulls away, shaking their head. Carvin, you can't solve everything by kissing me. I, uh, um... Fuck, that was stupid. I don't even know what to say. Sorry, I... Oh, God, shut up and come here. I blink and they're on top of me. They're snout pressed to mine. They're wake toppling us both over onto the bed. As their tongue drags against the edge of my muzzle, I open my maw, letting them in. Our rough tongues meet each other, and the feeling is electric. It's heat. It's fire spreading from my maw into my body, making my every muscle and every nerve burn with need. <laughs> and like breaks the kiss, my breath catches. I ride with a full body shiver both panting now, and their air between us is dense with heat and vapor in our mingled scents. Are you, uh, sure you want this? Yeah, I want this. Do you? Blake smirks. Oh yes, badly. Fuck. I kiss them again and their words taste like honey. I've never wanted or been wanted like this in my life. Right now, I think I've never wanted someone as much as I want Lake. Oh boy. Hey, can you help me with these? Lake starts undoing their trousers, and I reach over to pull them off. Oh my god, this is actually happening! Lake tosses their trousers aside and takes off their socks before turning back to me with, hungry, with a hungry look in their eyes. They push me back towards the bed frame and climb on top of me, straddling my waist. We're both already hard under our boxers, but as they grind against me, the need grows even greater. Lake's paws find their way under my shirt, exploring my sides and belly and dropping to my waist before returning to grab the hem. Hmm, can I? Please. Good boy. What? Did, did I hear that right? Uh, um, I'm messing with you. Come on, arms up. I let Lake pull my shirt up over my head. They cast it aside, their attention focused squarely on me. I watched their eyes trace a meandering path over my form. It seemed to map out every edge and every stripe before meeting my gaze. Holy hell. They licked their lips. You have no idea how hot you are. Really? If you did, you wouldn't ask that. Lake pulls their shirt up over their head, tufts of fur on their belly catch on the hem. I'm mesmerized, taking in the creamy palate of their fur. Their scent is intoxicating, wild and wintry. It is the forest, the trees, smoke and salt in the air. It is arousal, musk, want. And with their voice tinged by a wavering, needy pitch, the feeling of them hard against my belly, and their taste on my tongue, every sense, every piece of this moment is captured entirely by Lake. Fuck, ha. Huh. Hey, you okay? You still want to keep going? Yeah, just... My god, this is a lot. Oh, wait, are you... Isn't this your first time? It is. Are you sure you still want to do this with me? Their voice takes on a gentle lilt. Their hungry gaze softens. Under their ever starry eyes, I feel safe. There's nothing more. There's nothing more right than this. I'm sure. Okay, good. Why don't we take things slowly, then? Yeah. And if at any time something isn't good for you, please tell me, alright? Alright. Lake slides a paw down to my hips, and their fingers slip under the waistband of my boxers. Is this okay? Okay is an understatement. Nick chuckles and leans in to kiss my neck. I can help but moan as they wrap their paw around my cock and drag a silky paw pad across the head. Ha! Huh. Does that feel good? Mm hmm yeah. Nick starts stroking me, and now I'm whimpering into their fur as every cell in my body demands release. Their soft paw glides up and down rhythmically, keeping a pace slow enough to leave me wanting at the very edge. Mm, fuck, you're leaking. Guess that means I'm doing my job. Or maybe that someone's a needy tiger. It could be both. Lake chuckles and sits up, placing both paws on my chest. Alright, have I teased you enough already? I think so. 
What do you think? Cute. You can tell me what you want, you know. I'm I'm not in charge here. I mean, I wouldn't mind if you were. Really? Yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing, but you do, and I trust you. Oh, um, okay. Let me get these off of you. Think places a paw under my thighs to get me to lift them off before pulling off my boxers. Ha! Huh. Nice. It's my turn now. Link grabs my wrist and guides my paw to the waistband of the bo their boxers. Give me a paw here, will ya? As I slip their boxers off, Lake bends down again to bring their snap close to my ear. Good boy. The Lake nibbles on my ear before wrapping a paw around both of our cocks, each glistening with pre. Fuck. You like that? Ha! Huh. Yeah. Me too. But you can do a little more, you know. Sorry. Don't be. You're learning. Here. You can touch me wherever you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> I start low, bringing my paws to Lake's butt first. There you go. I give them a squeeze, bring my paws in their soft, smooth fur. Fluffy. Thanks, I try. I slide one paw to the side of their body, filling all their curves and corners, engraving their shape into my mind. As I do, they continue stroking us both, sending waves of heat through my body. Every time I think it can't possibly feel better, the need just seems to grow past the limit. My paws find their chest, and as I dig my fingers into their fluff, a paw pad grazes their nipple. Ah! What is it? Are you okay? You just found my sweet spot. Oh. Can I? Fuck yes. My right paw goes to Lake's nipple, my left to their thigh. I tease them again, tugging gently. Fuck! Ha! Mm. I never thought I'd hear Lake moan like this. I've been fairly quiet thus far, but now that I'm hearing it, fuck, I never want them to stop. I've never heard anything sweeter. Lake picks up the pace, stroking us both faster and faster. They're breathing hard, and their eyes are half closed in ecstasy. Carvin, I. Ah! Uh... <laughs> yeah? I'm. I'm gonna... Ah! With one last resounding moan, Lake finishes on top of me, drenching both of our cocks in my belly. Lake collapses onto me, their chin resting on my shoulder, breathing heavily into my neck fur. Fuck. Sorry. What? Why? Well, I mean, it wasn't... I was supposed to... Ah. That is not how I wanted that to go. It's okay. Don't be sorry. You've no idea how much I wanted to hear you moan like that. Really? Really, um, do you think you can get off off of me, though? <laughs> One sec. Lake pushes themselves up again and sits in my lap. Sorry, my arms are tired. Oh, we don't have to continue, then, if you don't want to. Are you kidding? I'm not done with you yet. There's that hungry look again. Let's try something, shall we? Lake hops off my waist and moves back, placing placing himself between my legs. What do you... Ah. Lake wraps a paw around my cock and begins stroking it gently. Fuck, I'm so close. Lake, are, are you sure about this? <laughs> Lake noses at the tip, drinking me in. A drop of pre reaches their lips and they lick it up. Fuck, that's hot. I am. I want to. Can I? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take good care of you, I promise. Lean back. Get comfy. I do as I'm told. Fuck. I'm just Lake's plaything right now. I'd probably do anything. Good boy. Lake drags her tongue across the underside of my cock, drawing out a long, guttural moan. Now that's what I wanted to hear. Lake opens their bond, takes me into the feeling. Oh god, there's no limit, it just keeps going. Lake keeps taking me higher and higher. Fuck! Lake takes even more of me in, grunting at first, before sucking me even deeper. Their paws were already warm and soft, but this, this is different. Their tongue is rough, but their touch is so gentle. I was already so close, I can barely contain myself. I'm breathing heavily. I'm struggling to keep myself from thrusting into their maw. Lake, I'm... <laughs> Close. The lion looks up at me with eyes more voracious than ever. Fuck. Ha. Ha. Attention tears into every muscle. I writhe. I tremble. I shudder like a sailing ship on the open sea. <laughs> when the release comes, it's like crashing on the warm sand, cradled in the sun's rays. Lake swallows it all, slurping down every drop hungrily. At last, they draw back their maw and gasp for breath. Oof. Lake sits up and runs a paw through their mane, pushing it away from their eyes. The gesture is careless, pure instinct, yet I can't help but marvel at it. Was that good? Yeah, really good. Phew, I'm glad it was worth it. That took a lot out of me, and you too, technically. Ha, <laughs> Lake looks down at my belly, then there's... What a mess. Yeah, maybe I should go take a shower. Well, I mean, if you want to do that, why don't we shower together? Oh, I liked that the first time. All right, then. 
make leads in to kiss me, placing both paws next to my head for support. But their arms give out like give out from, give out from under them. They flop down onto me, narrowly avoiding an accidental headbutt. Ow! Sorry, it's not easy to prop myself up for that long, you know. You could have told me if you wanted to switch. Nah, it's okay. The view's nice from up there. Heh. <laughs> Blake plants another kiss on my snap before nuzzling into my neck. Hey, come on, you gotta get up. Mm. Blake? Soft. I sigh. Are you gonna let me go? No, you're not going anywhere. Blake intertwines her legs and places one paw on my shoulder, the other under me. They drape their slim tail over mine, and I feel my own twitch in response. Jolts of energy travel from the base of the, from the base of the tip, as if that electric excitement I felt is still discharging. Fine, you win. <laughs> Does this work? You comfy? Yeah, it's really nice. Good boy. Oh God, I melt a little every time they say that. Okay, gotta get up early. Blake rests their head on my chest, shifting a little bit before settling down and taking a long, deep breath. I reach over to pet their head and nestle their body in my arm. I don't know how many more of these nights we'll have. When we're tangled together, wanting to be even closer than our bodies will allow. This feeling of Lake's warmth, their heartbeat, and their soft fur? It's enough. Lake looks up at me, their eyes blooming with tenderness, and I swear I could live in this moment forever. Good night, Carvin. Good night, Lake. Ah, oh, fucking hell, that was awesome. Fuck! So good! So good, I got this feeling- no. <laughs> Alright, we want to thank our patrons for support, it's thanks to them that this project can continue. If you like the game, yes. Otherwise, we recommend yes. Again, until next time. God, that was amazing! All of our proofreaders. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, God, they finally did it. They finally banged one out. <laughs> I, I hate that I put it like that. But Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to go ahead and end it right here. It's been 22 minutes, damn. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye